folks, Pastor Jay here from Know the Truth. So I got an email today from this fellow who happens to read books that deal entirely with magic and make pretend. At first I scoffed at what he wrote, but then fear gripped me. Have we gone so far as a society to put all of our faith and trust in a book or books? Books that deal in fiction and have no solid evidence to back them up? It seems that way, folks. The book we're talking about today is the Sword of Truth series by Terry Goodkind. In this series, there's a man named Lord Richard Rawl. And he talks about these wizard rules. Well, this email that I got states the wizard rules, and the author of the email told me how they were a lot better than my Ten Commandments. Here's the email. Dear Pastor Jay, I have been watching your stuff for a while now, and I must say that it truly saddens me that you have been deluded by the false commandments of the Abrahamic religions, since they are clearly outdated and do nothing to better your ability to make sense of reality. However, you needn't fear, because I am going to reveal the truth to you. The true commandments of life given by the great and powerful Lord Richard Rawl may reason always triumph. Lord Rawl calls them the wizard's rules which you should appreciate considering all the magic involved in your own false religion. Here they are. Take them deeply to heart as they will make you a much wiser man. Wizard's first rule. People are stupid. They will believe in a lie because they want it to be true or because they are afraid that it might be true. Wizard's second rule. The greatest harm can result from the best of intentions. Wizard's third rule. Passion rules reason for better or for worse. Wizard's fourth rule. There is magic and sincere forgiveness in the forgiveness you give, but more so in the forgiveness that you receive. Wizard's fifth rule. Mind what people do, not merely what they say, for deeds will betray a lie. Wizard's sixth rule, the only sovereign you can allow to rule your mind is reason. Wizard's seventh rule, life is the future, not the past. Wizard's eighth rule, deserve your victory. Wizard's ninth rule, a contradiction cannot exist in reality, not in part, nor in whole. Wizard's tenth rule, willfully turning aside from the truth is treason to oneself. Wizard's eleventh rule, you can destroy those who bear the truth, but you cannot destroy the truth itself. And Wizard's twelfth rule, there has always been those who hate, and there always will be. Then he goes on to say, a little introspection will immediately reveal that you are overwhelmingly guilty of violating every one of these great commandments, Pastor Jay. And not only you, but all Christian fundamentalists who delude themselves into believing that reason is of the devil. This is why you have so many problems in your life. Well, I very much hope you take these great revealed truths deeply to heart. And I also hope very much that you will join me among the fans of Lord Rawl, otherwise known as Truthers. Have a lovely day, Pastor. Andrew. All right, thank you for the email, Andrew. After much study, I have finally come to understand what you're trying to tell me. So I'm gonna break these rules down one by one. First thing I'd like to address with your email is that your premise is all wrong. We're not a religion anymore. Think of it as a personal relationship with God himself. I've covered this before. Second, your claims that my views are outdated are completely false. I mean, look, we're still around. You think that your science and your reason would have debunked our way of thinking by now. Clearly, you haven't. Good ideas fade away, God-inspired ideas don't. My King James Version of the Bible Bible is as close to reality as one can get. The part where you tell me that I didn't have to fear? Well, I don't get scared for one thing. Not with my church members to back me up. And as for this Lord Rawl character, he seems like a fictional character. A fictional character that was fabricated in order to push an agenda that was created by the Jesuits in order to have total domination over our society. Now, I know Lord Rawl is a fictional character. I'm just saying he seems like he's that kind of fictional character. It's also funny to me how you're abiding by these commandments that this Lord Rawl character has created. Aside from this fictional book, there's no evidence that he exists, there's no outside sources that mention him, and there's no eyewitness testimony either. And most importantly, there's no mention of him in the Bible. But I'll bite. Let's go over these rules one by one. So your first rule, people are stupid, they will believe a lie because they want it to be true, or because they're afraid it might be true. Yes, people are very stupid. I agree. Unless you're me, or unless you're part of my church. It's actually pretty impossible to be a member of my church and to be stupid at the same time. The second half of your first rule, being afraid that it might be true, that's way out of line. I want to get into heaven. I want my mansion. I want to drink from the river of milk and honey. I don't want to burn in hell forever, and I don't want God to be mad at me. With that in mind, I turn to the scripture for guidance and happiness. Essentially, the scriptures burn the truth into my eyes. Your second rule, the greatest harm can result from the best of intentions. Are you really trying to tell me that if I give a homeless person money, that they won't use that money to better their life? That if I give my friend a weapon to protect himself, he'll use it for harm? That if my friend and I are drinking, and he's more drunk than I am, and I drive us home, that I'm doing a bad thing? How? 
dare you. It's been scientifically proven that this world is a better place because of honest intentions. Now your third rule, passion rules reason for better or worse. I got five words for you, buddy. Passion of the Christ. For your fourth rule, there is magic and sincere forgiveness and the forgiveness you give, but more so in the forgiveness that you receive. So I'm not a big fan of receiving forgiveness. That just means I owe that person something now. I do not like being indebted to people. Less is Jesus. But with that situation, we really don't have a choice, do we? We also have to follow God's example here. He didn't create hell for nothing. All those people in hell, they're forgiven. But why are they in hell, you ask? It's because they didn't pledge your undying allegiance to Jesus. If you do that, you're completely forgiven. Wizard's fifth rule. Mind what people do, not merely what they say, for deeds will betray a lie. Hell yeah, you have to mind what people do. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Everybody everywhere is out to get you at all times. Everyone except Jesus and me will always lie to you. Wizard 6 rule. The only sovereign you can allow to rule your mind is reason. Ever hear of a man called God? Maybe you should consider letting him rule your mind. Wizard 7th rule. Life is future, not the past. I don't even know what that means, nor do I have time for these sci-fi fantasy shenanigans. Wizard Wizard's 8th rule, deserve your victory. Wizard's 9th rule, a contradiction cannot exist in reality, nor in part, nor Wizard's 10th rule, willfully turning aside from the truth is treason to one. Wizard's 11th rule, you can destroy those who bear the truth, but you cannot destroy the truth itself. Exactly. You can destroy me, but you cannot destroy God. Just read Fox's Book of Martyrs. In that book, there are hundreds of examples of atheists and the Illuminati destroying Christians. All for what the Christians believed in. We are still here, fella. Wizard's 12th rule, there have always been those who hate and always will be. Oh, I know. I'd say that 92% of my email is hate mail and haters of the truth. That will never change. So looking back, it seems like I haven't even violated one of your commandments or one of your wizard rules. When you take anything out of context, you can make it fit within your own worldview. Be careful of that. Always remember, context is key. Oh, and one more thing. The problems in my life aren't because of God or my belief. Rather, they're from everyone who's out to get me and also Pastor Roy's kid. Make no mistake about it. When it comes to my life, I am happier than a fly at a gangbang. So I will not be joining your so-called truthers, although I appreciate the email. There's only one truth, and that's the Bible. And also what God directly speaks in my head. Have a lovely day, Andrew. Thanks for watching.